That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We've had a lot of questions as of late. What should I do if I'm a contending roster in Dynasty? Should I be making some trades for top level studs? Should I be trading my future picks away? And yeah, we're gonna be talking a lot about that. And what's gonna be really useful in my opinion is rather than me just coming out and not necessarily pinning down exact players, not necessarily giving you the exact real world examples of what I'd be doing, Instead, I'm just going to give y'all a sneak peek behind what we do over there on Patreon pretty much every damn day over there on Patreon. When you join the flock, I go through and I check out your Dynasty League or even if it's just a regular 2021 Fantasy Football League, we do an in-depth breakdown on how you can go through and optimize your roster for your league settings with the direction your team should be going in. So yeah, this actually came from Anthony, a new member of the flock over there on Patreon. Of course, my man, thank you so much for supporting the show. I'm going to be very happy to look into this team for you and of course before we get into it make sure you go down there drop that like leave a comment subscribe to the channel only if you play dynasty if you do not play dynasty fantasy football this place isn't for you and also if you want a fantasy flock network hat let me grab one really quick if you want access to our rest of season rankings whether it's just 2021 whether you want access to our rest of season dynasty rankings both of those can be found over there on Patreon as well as you can get in a Flock Dynasty League with us as well as you can get into our Dynasty group chat. I mean, there's just so much over there on Patreon. Of course, you can find that in the description of the video as well as down there in the comment section. But yeah, let's go through and let's break down this team. This is going to be a 12 team, not super flex, two quarterback format. And we actually had, I believe it was the Flock two dynasty league that was actually a two quarterback two tight end format and it was a 12 team two quarterback format where i mean i went through i loaded up on qbs and i'll say we, we didn't choose the right ones we got guys in there like zach wilson so team not that great but beyond the point whenever i'm viewing a two quarterback format compared to a super flex league i know in theory i mean there's not much of a difference in the value of what you have from a two qb and a super flex with how you should be structuring your team around the quarterback position in reality there's actually a definite difference in that if you see an injury to one of your quarterbacks say you're going into the season in a super flex format and you have josh allen and kirk cousins if kirk cousins goes down for a month he goes down for five weeks i mean maybe that guy's russell wilson all of a sudden in the super flex format yeah it sucks that you don't have two top level quarterbacks but still you're going to be able to go through plug and play a wide receiver in that super flex spot boo hoo you're going to be missing out on just say six points per game compared to the expectation on if you had a quarterback two in that slot. Whereas in a true two quarterback format, that happens to you. If you are not viable at quarterback three, all of a sudden you're taking a zero at that second quarterback spot. And the difference between jamming a wide receiver four or just getting no points at all at that second QB slot is massive. And in that reason, during the season, you're going to find that a lot of these quarterbacks are much harder to trade for than they would be just in a regular 12 team super flex format. But regardless, let's go check this team out. It's going to be seven to no right now. So keep in mind, this is a contending team. Maybe, I mean, we'll go over there and we'll use one of these Patreon teams that we get sent every day and we'll break down a rebuilding roster sometime soon on this channel. Let me know if y'all would like to see that, but let's check out this seven and O team. Let's start it off at the quarterback position where we have Daniel Jones, Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson. Let me talk a little bit about each one of these quarterbacks here from a dynasty fantasy football perspective. And keep in mind, that you have to change your perspective on these player prototypes dependent on your league settings. A two quarterback, 12 team league, I'm gonna be looking for something completely different from a quarterback than we would be looking from a 10 team, one QB format. And this is the perfect example that we can give in Jalen Hurts at our quarterback two slot. So Jalen Hurts, if you go through, if you check out my dynasty rankings, I'm not going to be that high on Jalen Hurts compared to where we are in a redraft context. And knowing that if you're playing in a one quarterback dynasty or a one quarterback redraft league there, the floor at your quarterback position doesn't really matter because what's the worst case in a one quarterback dynasty format? If you have Jalen Hurts as the only quarterback on your roster and he ends up getting benched in three weeks for Gardner Minshew. I'm not predicting that's going to happen, but we can all sit here and agree that it's at least in the range of outcomes. Well, Jalen Hurts, if that happens on a one quarterback format, who the hell cares? Go through, trade a third round pick, go get someone like 
Kirk Cousins. Trade a second round pick. Go get someone. Obviously, you're not going to get Joe Burrow now, but go get someone like Ryan Tannehill. The price point on those quarterbacks is going to be so damn low that the replaceability factor is just going to make it where you can kind of swing for the fences here. You can take your shot on someone like Jalen Hurts, understanding that when he is on the field, when he is producing, this will be a quarterback that's a top 10 option at the minimum with top five upside, just given the rushing production that he has and how that translates over to fantasy points. Whereas in a two quarterback league, it's a completely different story. Of course, we still love having that elite level upside, but the floor is going to matter just as much, if not more than just the ceiling alone in a two quarterback format, because let's go through that same scenario. Let's say, okay, Jalen Hurts plays out this season. Right now, the Eagles are two and five. Let's say they get to week 10 and all of a sudden they're currently three and seven. Well, maybe we get Jalen Hurts getting benched, whether you think he deserves it or not. And in that scenario, Jalen Hurts getting benched drastically changes the outlook of this team. You go from having two top 10 quarterbacks to all of a sudden we are praying that Daniel Jones and Lamar Jackson can make it through this season. Now with this roster in particular, because we have three quarterbacks that we are confident that you can play at least two of them on a week to week basis. It's not going to be detrimental to be moving on from Jalen hurts. And also this is a contending team. And even though Jalen hurts was drafted in 2020, as we discussed this past season, you love the production when he's playing, but given the fact that he was a second round pick from this Philadelphia Eagles organization. And you'd imagine that they have two decent first round picks with the Indianapolis Colts and the Philadelphia Eagles first round picks in 2022. You're not going to be surprised if Jalen Hurts is not going to be the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles going forward. But for a 7-0 roster, where we are definitely optimizing for production this season, and we are already betting on Devonta Smith, the wide receiver one for Jalen Hurts, in this roster in particular, it's the right spot to roster Jalen Hurts. Now, usually I don't want him in a two quarterback format, but when we have Lamar Jackson, when we have Daniel Jones, I think we can afford to take that swing for the ceiling, especially if we're going to be stacking as well with Devonta Smith. But I do want to put a big red flag out for the Jalen Hurts future value that you're going to see. Daniel Jones, I mean, I don't necessarily think there's too much to talk about here with Daniel Jones. I mean, this is a quarterback that has had a little bit of that rushing upside that we talked about this offseason. I think that he's a fine quarterback three and a two quarterback format. You're really hoping that this is someone that maybe takes the elite forward at the back half of the season. If we can get Kadarius Tony, Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, Saquon Barkley healthy all at the same time, that will drastically help Daniel Jones. And Lamar Jackson, nothing to talk about here. Obviously, Lamar Jackson's that elite level quarterback. We can just move on over there to the running back position where there's a ton to talk about here at running back right now in the starting lineup. We have Daryl Henderson and Javante Williams, and we have a decent amount of depth on this team as well. We have Zach Moss, Elijah Mitchell down there on the bench. Zach Moss, from a dynasty perspective, I actually like buying him low this past offseason, just given the fact that you were looking at this Buffalo Bills situation and you were saying with Zach Moss, this is a running back that has that team investment. He was drafted in the third round back in 2020. I mean, I don't perceive Zach Moss to be a talented running back in the slightest, but it doesn't really matter when he's playing for the Buffalo Bills. We know this offense will be able to effectively move the ball down the field each and every week. And Zach Moss clearly has shown that he has that red zone role just making Zach Moss a low-end running back to play every single week with more upside than that, given the offense that he's playing in. So yeah, knowing that you're going to have Zach Moss in a very similar role, if not the exact same role over the next two to three seasons, I actually think he's a great discount buy and a great depth piece in Dynasty. Elijah Mitchell, I will say, fits this roster fine based on what I'm about to advise us to do. And I hate to bring this up for a contending team because I will say with a contending team, Daryl Henderson, I mean, you love the production you're going to get this season. Daryl Henderson, also very similar to Zach Moss on that rookie contract. Daryl Henderson was drafted in the third round back in 2019 out of Memphis. But the problem is, I just think in dynasty fantasy football in particular, Daryl Henderson is damn near the perfect sell that you're going to be looking at at this time. And I think another very appealing sell candidate, and we're not going to be looking to play, make this play right now. I'm going to be projecting three to four weeks out here is going to be David Montgomery. Now, the reason I'm looking to sell each of these two running backs, albeit they're on their rookie contracts, you know, those are always the guys that we're going to go through and try to chase 
is A, with Daryl Henderson, this is a running back that while, yes, the production this season is going to be fantastic, he is going to take a significant, significant hit next year with Cam Akers being healthy and Cam Akers presumably being the starting running back here. And I know that Achilles injury is devastating historically for running backs. Trust me, I had Cam Akers ranked as our dynasty running back four before that Achilles injury. Then we moved Najee Harris up to number four. Now he's at number one. Kind of know how that story goes. But regardless, I mean, we are still going to be expecting that at the very minimum, this is going to be a split backfield where worst case scenario, I mean, you get Cam Akers 50% of the touches, whereas I think he has upside for more. So projecting that going forward, Daryl Henderson, in my opinion, is not going to be a running back that we can start in 2022. And in the case of David Montgomery, this will also be an option that you're looking at and saying, well, at the end of the day, are we going to want to start him in 2022? While you'd imagine that he actually has the role pretty locked in for himself, just given the fact that this Chicago Bears team is going to have significant holes on its roster this offseason. They're going to have Allen Robinson off the franchise tag. I can almost guarantee you that unless Allen Robinson's agent, Allen Robinson's mom, Allen Robinson's entire family gives him the horrible advice to stay in Chicago. And for some reason, he makes the horrible decision and listens. I mean, Allen Robinson is out of there. So you're going to be looking at a team that just used their future first round pick to move up and get Justin Fields. At the same time, they're going to have nothing at wide receiver. We know this is also a roster that the defense isn't exactly what it was two years ago. So I'm going to be expecting that David Montgomery has a very safe job in 2022, but it's going to be on a team that has a significant amount of holes and Justin Fields as its starting quarterback. So I think that's another situation that we're looking to avoid in the long term. And I know this is a contending team right now, but a great thing with the contending team is we can look to make a play where we sacrifice some depth and sacrifice some long-term and short-term production. I don't even know what you want to label this as, but say in three weeks, if we get David Montgomery coming back and he is being a running back too, and he just takes over that role from Keel Herbert in that Chicago Bears offense. And if that happens, and then all of a sudden you're viewing Daryl Henderson producing running back one numbers just for 2021, and we can try to package together David Montgomery and Daryl Henderson just to get a running back in return. That's going to be giving you something similar to that Daryl Henderson production for this season, maybe slightly more, yet we like the long-term upside from him a little bit more. I think that would be fantastic. Now, of course, the names that come to mind whenever I'd advise you to go through and make this trade, I mean, are the stable running backs that you'd love to have in Dynasty, the options that I know we're most likely not going to be able to get DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Najee Harris. Now, if you could go get those options, that would be fantastic. Of course, you don't need me to tell you that. You're probably not going to be able to get them for the combination of Daryl Henderson and David Montgomery, even if Henderson's producing as a running back one and David Montgomery's producing as a running back two. However, I think some other trades that we could be looking to make is if we could pivot over to Saquon Barkley. I think that would be very intriguing in Dynasty. A lot of people are currently off of Barkley, knowing that he has dealt with a multitude of injuries for three straight seasons now. Now, I'm looking at this past injury for Saquon Barkley and how he just stepped on its opponent's ankle, I mean, and kind of rolled his own. That's not necessarily because Saquon Barkley is injury prone. That is just being at the wrong place, the wrong time. Saquon Barkley, once he comes back, he's going to be that prototypical bell cow running back that maybe given how bad the offense is and Daryl Henderson's playing for the Los Angeles Rams, just a worst case scenario. I mean, he is the same level running back of Daryl Henderson for this season in fantasy production, but more so in the long term, Saquon Barkley was drafted in 2018. This is a running back that will sign that extension this next upcoming offseason. And he'll have that role going forward where he'll be the bell cow running back. So I think with Barkley, maybe you're sacrificing some production this season. I mean, when you have Zach Moss as your running back three on this roster, I don't even necessarily want to say that you're sacrificing that much production. But in the long term, while Saquon Barkley is a little bit older than Daryl Henderson and David Montgomery, I actually think that you're getting a much much better asset. If we could make that swap, that'd be fantastic. There's a damn good chance that we can't trade for Harris, Swift, Taylor, or Barkley. So I would be willing to add to the package of David Montgomery and Daryl Henderson. I'd be willing to go down there and add that future second. I mean, we'd also be willing to add a depth wide receiver that you'd be looking at. I mean, just say someone like Marquez Callaway, just anything to really get that deal done. Of course, it will be dependent on your league mates and exactly how they're valuing that 2021 production with Daryl Henderson. 
Now, another running back we're looking at with this roster, Javante Williams. We're holding Javante Williams, a running back that was drafted in the top 40 picks this past season. I mean, you actually had the Denver Broncos trading up to get him. Profile to be a three-down running back. Clearly is trending in the right direction as well. I think we can go over two wide receiver. But actually, let me just highlight really quick one reason I'm telling you to make that two-for-one trade at the running back position to give up a little bit of that depth to get that asset that we like a lot more in return. And that's because we have Zach Moss. We have Elijah Mitchell down there on the bench. I am going to be very comfortable playing Zach Moss and Elijah Mitchell as we go through the bye weeks for running backs like Javante Williams and then whoever that stud running back we may be able to get in return is just given the fact that I mean they've already gone through their bye weeks themselves you are seven to no so worst case scenario hell maybe if we lose whenever we make this trade and you have Javante on his bye whatever the case may be we're still going to be a team slated for the fantasy football playoffs so really the only thing that matters is that fantasy football playoff upside now let's go over to wide receiver really quick where we have Tyree Kill wide receiver one Jamar Chase wide receiver two. So I'd say from a dynasty rankings context, you are actually going to have Jamar Chase at wide receiver one. I will say if you pull up our dynasty rankings over there on Patreon, you're going to see that we have Jamar Chase at wide receiver two behind Justin Jefferson. But that's besides the point. You have two stud wide receivers with Hill and Chase down there in the flex spots. You have two veteran wide receivers producing right now with Robert Woods and Antonio Brown. Now, at the time of this recording, we currently have some uncertainty with the injury to Antonio Brown and exactly when he's going to be coming back. But to be honest, doesn't freaking matter because you have Jerry Judy, you have Devonta Smith down there on the bench as well. So you have six wide receivers that you are more than confident with going through and looking at this season's production as well as what we'll have going forward. And to be completely honest, I don't necessarily think that we even need to make any trades here at the wide receiver position. I think that you have a really nice combination of that top end talent with Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase and then backfilling just with a ton of depth here. So when you can have that Antonio Brown injury, you can had that Jerry Judy injury at the beginning of the season, and it really didn't impact your roster that much, just given that you have that wide receiver depth that we want to be going through and circulating in the buys, just given the fact that you do have that wide receiver depth that we can just circulate through those flex spots. So yeah, I'm thinking we're really excited with what we have at wide receiver. Honestly, don't want to make any plays there. Now going over to the tight end position, I mean, this will be a spot where Currently, you have essentially Logan Thomas as your starting option. I know right now you have Ricky Seals Jones, which clearly is a fine option to replace Logan Thomas until Thomas comes back. Hopefully, we get him back this week. We also have Tyler Conklin. Tyler Conklin's a tight end that I really like for this season in particular. Obviously, when Irv Smith Jr. comes back next year, you're not going to be too excited. But I mean, this was the tight end that the Minnesota Vikings coaching staff was talking up before the Irv Smith injury back in training camp. I mean, it was crazy at the time, but clearly they've had a role for Tyler Conklin like what we have there Donald Parham I mean this is someone that you're more so betting on the long-term upside with maybe that's your tight end of the future but I will say one of my biggest mistakes in Dynasty whenever I first started back in 2014 at a high volume is I thought we were able to just go through and accurately predict those next breakout tight ends years out in the future I mean we are going for guys like oh my gosh you'd find Rico Gathers on all of my rosters very similar to Donald Parham I mean yeah you can see some upside but you can't be buying in too much as we used to do Outside of that, I think this is a very strong team for it to be 7-0. Of course, you love the fact that we're going to be shaping up to have that bye week in the fantasy football playoffs because if you have that bye week in the playoffs, it means everything. Now, in terms of trading away our future assets, I think it's really nice that you don't have any of your own 2022 picks right now. However, you do have a 2022 second from someone else, and we also don't have a 2023 first round pick. So this is a team that you have to be saying, we're going all in on the next two years. Because even if you start off slowly in 2022, you're not going to be in a position where we can go, okay, well, we started off 0-4. Let's just trade away these assets. Let's just get future picks in, and we'll just take the 101 and the rebuild from there. I honestly think the runway with this team in particular is for us to go all in over the next two seasons when we still have hopefully production from Robert Woods, production from Tyree Kill, production from Antonio Brown, and then we can look to pivot off and we can look to rebuild in 2024 after we've had back-to-back championships, but then those players look to get a little bit older. But yeah, I love this roster. I really hope that this helped you out in the slightest. I hope our strategy at how we are trying to upgrade running back use a little bit of this depth to get that stud level player coming in is possibly going to work out for you of course it's going to be a league dependent on if you can get one of those deals done but the running backs that I would definitely be targeting would be guys like Najee Harris DeAndre Swift Jonathan Taylor and Saquon Barkley would be trying to trade away Daryl Henderson David Montgomery and another small piece in return of course you're gonna have to wait until David Montgomery is back and producing if we're gonna have any chance to get that deal done 
But yeah, thank you again for supporting the channel. Really hope that you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I really hope that you were enjoying the flock over there on Patreon so far. And I believe that's all we have for this team breakdown. Of course, if y'all want to see a rebuilding version of this, instead of posting it over there on Patreon, I can post it on this channel. Just let me know. And yeah, that's all I got for you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And I hope to see you with the next video.